Uh, on your next circle, I want you to draw another pair of equal chords, another pair of equal chords. Um, draw some different ones and maybe draw them, maybe draw them like this, overlapping, something that looks interesting. So I'm going to draw something that looks like this. Bless you. Okay, so if I again have equal chords, like so, okay, what can I say about their relationship to the center? Because that's going to be, you can see um, the second, I've, I've put that word in there, so something, something, ah, uh, whatever from the center. If you have a look, if you have a look, you can see from the center, if I measured the distance to these chords, if I measured the distance, like so, I have to put a right angle. Let me say that again. If I measure the distance from a point, like the center, to a line or interval, like this chord, I have to measure the perpendicular distance. Would anyone like to suggest to me why? Like, why can't I draw a line off over here or there? Hmm. I'll give you two reasons. Number one, uh, it's the shortest distance, right? If you want to get quickly from the point to the line, then um, going perpendicular, just like crossing a road, going perpendicular is the quickest way, okay? But why do we want the shortest distance? Like, there's no reason to, to necessarily morally say that's the right one. We need a consistent way to describe this distance. Because if I said you can go anywhere along this line, then here you'd get a different length. And, and here you'd get an even longer length, and on and on and on. So I need something we can all agree, we can be um, consistent on. So we just say the shortest distance, which is perpendicular. Okay. So I've got this guy. Um, I'm going to measure the distance to the other chord as well, like so. Okay. So you've got these two distances. If you've done the same thing as I have, you've got two chords. The chords are equal in length. So let's call this P and Q again, and RS. If PQ equals RS, then let's give these guys names. Let's call them M and N. What can I say about OM, that distance to the chord, and OM, that distance to the chord? What do they look like? They sure look like they're the same, don't they? Okay. Now, how would you prove that's the case? Again, we're not going to go right out the whole thing, but think about what we did over here and how it could apply over there. What would you say? Hmm. The more colors you have, um, the easier you can do these kinds of things. If we put these constructions back in from before, the radii, right? So here, there's one pair of radii that creates a triangle, and here's another one that creates the other triangle, right? You have the same congruent triangles as before for the same reasons, okay? But remember, like, what does congruent mean? Uh, if you had to, someone had never heard the word congruent, and you wanted to give them a synonym or, or a phrase that meant the same thing as congruent, what would you say? What would be your definition? Any suggestions? Now, we've been using the word congruent for a long time. We have a symbol for it and we, we know how to prove it. If you had to, if the word congruent was struck out from the English language, what word could we use to replace it? Equal in size and shape would be perfect, right? In every way, these two things, and that's why the congruent sign looks so much like an equal sign, right? In fact, it's like an equal sign, like a souped up equal sign. It's like they're really, really equal. Everything is the same. Um, another word you could maybe use is identical. Okay? If these two triangles really are identical, then these things here are the perpendicular heights of those triangles. Do you agree? Well, if everything is the same, then these two are also the same. Okay? So I can say if the chords are equal, if PQ equals RS, then I can say the distances to the chords are also equal. Okay? Um, note, that's the perpendicular distance, it's the shortest distance. So how would I say this? This is property two, sorry, you're really gonna have to squeeze this in. It starts the same way, equal chords. Equal chords are, what's one word that means they are the same distance away? Wait, no, 
When we say when we say triangles have all the same angles, we say they are. It's one word. It's a long word. We say they're equi. Uh, now, yeah. So when we're comparing these two, right, we would say these guys are equiangular, even if they're not equilateral, right? By the way, lateral means sides. Um, angular means angles. So these guys here are equidistant because they're the same distance from the center. So that's property two. Uh, e -Q -U -R, I'll write it for you. <laughs> uh, Equidistant. Same distance. Okay, now I've held your hand for these first two properties. I'm going to draw property three. Obviously you don't know what it is, but I'm going to draw it. I'm going to then ask you to try and prove it, like use some logic like we've been doing here, and then see what wording would fit into property three that matches this diagram, okay? So draw me a chord, any chord, maybe something like say this. Draw in the center, let's call this O, let's call this P and Q. This property, I'll just make sure I get the right one. <clears throat> yeah, that's, that's going to be sneaky. We'll do our best. Okay, um, I'm going to draw a line here. And I'm going to say that this is in the middle. Okay. <clears throat> if it's in the middle, I'm suggesting that it's at right angles. This is the picture that goes with property three. And this goes both ways. You know Pythagoras, how if you know that something's right angled, you can say a squared plus b squared equals c squared? Pythagoras is lovely because its converse is true. If you know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared, you can then conclude that the triangle is right angled. So this property, it also goes in reverse. Its converse is true. You can go from right angle to the theorem, or you can go from the theorem to the right angle. Okay? This one is also true. If you've got this two, these two lengths being the same, then you'll have this right angle. Or if you have this right angle, you'll get these two lengths being the same. So the one property captures both of those ideas all at once. I want you to see, can you prove that that must be the case? If you've got that bisecting happening, you get a right angle, um, or vice versa. And then can you come up with a wording for it that fits into property three? Okay, I'll give you guys a couple minutes to have a play while I draw new circles. Okay, would you like me to show you? I, I saw most people have the right constructions. Um, if all else fails in a circle geometry question, draw some radii, okay? Because radii are always equal, so you'll find something, okay? So I'm going to join up. OP and OQ, let's do that. So like I mentioned before, I can prove this in both directions. So watch me prove it in this direction. If I do not know, if I do not know that there's a right angle there, but I do know that PM equals MQ because it's the bisector. Watch. I know that these two are the same because that is the setup for the question. I know that the things I just constructed, OP and OQ, are also the same because? Because radii. So that's good. And then lastly, OM. See this length in here? It is a length that is in both of these triangles, the top one and the bottom one. So I would say OM is common. Now, once you've got three sides, it's the same congruence proof you've seen before. It comes up quite a lot. So these two triangles are congruent. That means all of their corresponding angles are the same. But this angle and this angle happen to correspond. Well, if they're the same angle, but they're both on a straight line, then they both clearly have to be 90 degrees. Do you, do you agree? So that's why I can say, all right, that's my reasoning. Okay. If on the other hand, I turn the tables and I say, actually, I don't know that they are equal to each other, those lengths, but I do know this is a right angle. I'm just going to have a slightly different congruence proof. What congruence proof will I have? Ah, so RHS is the very uncommonly used one, but you have to use RHS because 
this side and this side, they do not include this angle, right? You, you need this angle in here to use SAS. Does that make sense? So you've got right angle, you've got the hypotenuse, you've got a shorter side, congruence again, which means that these guys are corresponding lengths, you're done. Okay? So there are more than one way to say these, but here's the way that I would say property three. The, and we're used to using this as an adjective, but I'm going to use it as a noun. The perpendicular, the perpendicular, so that's a line that is perpendicular to something else. The perpendicular from the center to a chord bisects the chord. It chops it in half. Does that make sense? I'll say it again. The perpendicular from the center to a chord bisects the chord. How would I say this in reverse? If I didn't know it was perpendicular, I would probably say the bisector from the center to a chord is perpendicular to the chord. It's the same property, but said in reverse, it's, a, it's the converse. Okay. 